So we figured out the loot. We we beat the system. We beat them. I can almost guarantee you, somebody out there set all of this up to try to take me down. So, I am in OKC right now, Oklahoma City. This is pretty much being recorded about a month and a half after uh, I was over in Sacramento filming this story for the Sky Cloud Club. But I think it's a really, really, really interesting story, okay? It's a really important story. Why is it important? Because this is really one of the very few stories we hear where the little guy, right, the underdog, right, David beats Goliath. And even though everything is stacked against you, even though the entire industry, the market there, the regulations in that specific market are rigged against you, finding a way to be successful. The city of Sacramento just doesn't like it, but we're here, we're doing what we can. You know, we're here to stand. Oh, yeah. Because a lot of the guys from the traditional market, we don't want to work for a corporation. Um, we don't want to, you know, we want to get our investors and be able to make our own money and, and be our own men at the men and women at the same time. Um, so why would we work for somebody um, or a corporation when we can just start the stuff that we've been doing from day one? So obviously we pissed off the city of Sacramento. We pissed off a lot of people, might have stepped on some toes. They just didn't anticipate that I was already prepared for this and I was going to bounce back from it anyways. It's just, you know, a matter of time that, you know, they figure out like, hey, like he's not going anywhere. What's popping, y'all? So this is LOC. How are we doing? This is my last night in Sacramento. We're in downtown right now. We're about two blocks away from the Capitol. And we're going to look at a really, really interesting model here when it comes to regulations. Okay, this is a story about finesse in the government. See this whole situation that they have here where it's a, it's a delivery license, but they're pretty much running it like a retail. It's a pretty big loophole. I love to see it because it's someone innovating. It's someone that's been held back by the city, that's been held back by the regulations, and has made something out of nothing. Uh, my name is John, uh, we're at 725K Street. We're on the corner of K and 7th Street, uh, across from the Sacramento Kings Arena. So initially what I created was a uh, CBD dispensary um, with a delivery license. I noticed that they weren't giving out, as far as dispensary license, uh, quickly. And uh, the uh, curb for that happening, it just took too long to get a dispensary license. So I decided to open up a CBD shop, see how it ran, um, until I got the opportunity to actually run a dispensary. Um, but what I noticed, a lot of people were going broke over trying to keep the real estate going without any capital being uh, coming into play. Uh, so now, um, with me running the shop, it made it easier for me to have capital, sit on a building, and actually be able to, um, you know, run my operations until I can get compliant with the city and state regulations for, you know, a dispensary if I was able to obtain one. My name's Eric Henry, we're here at SkyCloud. So what we're doing is a pickup location. So we have a CBD hemp store and the only products that we have inside the store is CBD hemp, federally legal compliant product. We also have a California state and a city of Sacramento approved delivery permit. So we took the model of a pretty much a dispensary with only CBD compliant federally legal product. So if the client would like to come in and order any product with TC in it, we have our kiosk, like Taco Bell or McDonald's, if you will. Um, they can order right on the kiosk. They can talk to the bud tenders. We can assist you in the product that you need. Then we deliver the product to you outside. So no product ever comes in the door. 
Um, everything is, there's no live product up there. It's basically a showcase of different brands. And each person can look at a different brand and choose what they want and then basically order it through our, um, our kiosks or through any of the um, butt tenders that's at the, um, in the store. Um, and that's 100% legal. I'm pushing the limits here <laughs> when it comes to um, what code enforcement really wants to happen. But truthfully, the state doesn't have a correct, the only law for me for delivery is I can't deliver into a state the state building or a federal a federal building. So being that we have a retail storefront, we can deliver into it. We got raided recently. The code enforcement said that we cannot deliver into the store. We can deliver to everyone else, just not to our store. Or so forth. I can do it into any of my own locations that I, you know, get around town as a, as a retail storefront. So I didn't see any difference. So um, the only thing is the logistics of the situation. And then when they exit out of the front of the building, they have the product right there, you know, and there was no issues with that. You know, there's nothing in the regulations that say, hey, you can't do this because your delivery, I'm delivering to a location. I mean, it's definitely gonna catch on. It's definitely gonna catch on. So obviously we pissed off the city of Sacramento. We pissed off a lot of people, might've stepped on some toes. It pretty much what everyone says to us, this is a good idea. The city of Sacramento is the only people that don't understand it. Um, the raid. <laughs> so. I woke up on the November 29th, 28th, I believe, um, to all of my alarms going off. And when I'm looking at my alarms, I'm seeing a bunch of officers breaking into all of my locations, not just one, everything. It, code enforcement was in question. It's just, they wanted to know what we were doing. It's just confusing though, because we gave them a business plan. They approved the business plan. Three months later, the same people that approved my business plan raided me. And code enforcement didn't, it's not like they raided me. Um, as they were breaking into them, I was just like, hey, like, what's, what's, what's this all about? What's going on? Like, I have a license for my CBD shop and I have a license for uh, my delivery. What's the deal? So I ended up going, you know, down, down to the officers and, you know, going to the shop to see like what's going on. Anybody else that would probably ran for it, but I'm like, I have a license. I'm not worried about what's about to happen to me because, you know, I have attorneys and lawyers and if we need to fight anything. We just need to fight anything. What I'm doing is perfectly legal. So what's going on? It was basically a shakedown. They were trying to figure out how much money I've made. Um, they wanted to know if the, um, if I had any product or any money on the premises that they can confiscate or take. And anything that was on the premises was just all for personal use. We don't keep any products on site. So we're just like, what's going on? We ended up having a conversation with the officers and they told us, they were like, hey, um, you're making this way too easy. You're operating like a dispensary. You're making this way too easy for um, people to get this from you. And I'm like, well, isn't that the reason why we have a delivery license? So we can sell. And they were like, the way you're doing it is just, you're making it way too easy. And I'm like, well, how do you want me to operate? Well, they were like, everything that you're doing is fine. You know, we want you to take the payment inside, but we want you to hand the people outside. 
and we're like, what's the difference? And then I posed the question back to this person, uh, to one of the officers, I was like, well, if that person ordered from Starbucks, can we walk in into Starbucks and sell it? They were like, yeah, they, they did the order and so forth. You're doing it just like how you're doing it. You can walk it into the location and sell it. And I'm just like, so what's the difference between my location and Starbucks? It's because you're doing it. Like, they really was targeting me. Like, because you're doing it, we don't want you to do it like that. We want you to do it like this. And I'm like, okay, see what's going on. It's all about control, you know. Um, police officers don't know the law for kids. Code enforcement does. If anybody was gonna tell me anything, it should have been code enforcement. But they didn't. They told me to just, hey, run your business how you see fit, and I did that. And because I did that, I'm, you know, I get a little notch for everything. So um, after they saw that there was nothing really to, you know, to do with the situation um, after the raid, they let me go from detaining me and they, everybody went about their business and they said, you can open back up and continue operations. And I'm like, well, I have a busted out window. You took all my registers, you took all my, you know, POS systems, like how am I supposed to operate? Doesn't make any sense. So I had to acquire all that stuff back and then uh, open up, you know, operations. You had to buy new shit? Yeah, I had to buy new, right. everything. When they took everything, they said that they needed an investigation. Uh, they needed to launch an investigation and they, they didn't have anything. So this is what they did in order to file something criminally against me. They found a samurai sword or a cane sword and they attempted to charge me with a felony for the cane sword. Cane sword. So I was like, you guys are kind of reaching. And they were like, well, you know, we'll give you a, um, a misdemeanor for it. Um, this is a dangerous weapon. And I'm like, this dangerous weapon was not nowhere visible anywhere in this building. You like really had to find it in order to, um, you know, see where it was at. It was, it was under something. So I'm like, this is not used to harm anybody. And you can get this at a, um, at a gas station or even a novelty store or something at a, um, Japanese anime store. So you really trying to charge me, but that was their basis for holding my stuff because now they have two infractions that they gave me and a cane sword for a misdemeanor. And I'm just like, they dropped them. Yeah. Is it yeah. true that there were people sent? Do you think there's potentially retail companies around here that are that potentially sent these cops? I mean, maybe not directly, but indirectly, or no? Do you think like? If you oh, absolutely. I mean, there's 30 licenses in this um, city right now, and there's another 10 that are trying to operate to get open. And out of all of them, I'm right in front of the Sacramento Kings arena. Somebody snitched or said something to send the cops or police my way. So when they came in here, they came in guns drawn. It wasn't like, hey, how you doing? We're gonna come and check your spot, which they should have just sent code enforcement because we would have let them right in. Um, we have a legal license, so, you know, with the city and state, they're obligated to come in and just check our place at any time that, that they wanted to. They didn't have to kick our doors in. So um, when they were sent in, they were sent in to look for something that they can catch me on. And because we didn't have anything, it was just a wash. And then all the taxpayer dollars that they put on this, it just yeah. made somebody look stupid. Honestly, I believe somebody wants me out of this building because I have prime real estate right in the middle of the city. Yeah. And I have too many business owners that have actually been over here watching my business to be like, hey, like I like what you're doing. Better you, I can do it better without you here. Like I can almost guarantee you somebody out there set all of this up to try to take me down. 
you know. And then not only that, like if you really think about it, they were trying to exhaust all my funds because if the cops came over here to try to clear me out, how am I gonna recover from that? Lawyers too. Yeah, because I have to I have to come out of pocket for all that. Okay. Lawyers, attorneys, and just you know making sure my employees are okay, making sure my rent's paid, make sure my utilities, and like, if they snap all my money, then I won't be able to do any of this. And then I go out of business and then it's a wrap for me. But they just didn't anticipate that I was already prepared for this and I was gonna bounce back from it anyways. It's just, you know, a matter of time that, you know, they figure out like, hey, like he's not going anywhere. And I literally had, you know, told OCM and, you know, all these other code enforcement officers. I'd emailed them and to let them know, like, hey, like, you know, instead of you guys coming at me like this, you could have just gave me an offer. And I know what's going on. That's why I don't worry about, you know, what the next person is doing and, you know, what the next dispensary is doing because you know, we're straight. We're gonna sit here on this property until we get what's due to us. At the end of the day, you're, you're paying three or four million dollars for a dispensary, right? Or, or probably more. But why, why pay all that much money when you can just deliver to each one of your locations and not have to pay any of that? You know, that's the part of the game that I picked up because I'm not about to drop for you know two to three million on a dispensary license unless you know they're really offering it and then who am I gonna pair up with? Because I don't have that type of capital. Nobody does. This game is made to pay to play for the corporations that are out here. It's not to pay to play for the small people, uh, the mom and pop shops and so forth. They don't have that type of capital. And then they don't have that type of time, you know, for us to sit on a building for two, three, four plus years before they give us the okay um, in a lottery or even just, you know, being a, a friend of a city council member or a, um, a friend of a, a city manager or something like that. That's, that takes time. And it's the time that we don't have. So, I am in OKC right now, Oklahoma City. This is pretty much being recorded about a month and a half after uh, I was over in Sacramento filming this story for the Sky Cloud Club. But I think it's a really, really, really interesting story, okay? It's a really important story. Why is it important? Because this is really one of the very few stories we hear where the little guy, right, the underdog, right, David beats Goliath, where based off of true, you know, mastery of understanding regulations, of understanding what can work, of being crafty, pays off. And even though everything is stacked against you, even though the entire industry, the market there, the regulations in that specific market are rigged against you, finding a way to be successful, right? And it's a really, really important story in my opinion because I think people need to see that this is possible, that you can do this. It may not be this specific way, but you can do this. And that the delivery license is something that's been overlooked, you know, for a while now. And that I always thought was going to be a great way for the little guy to kind of you know, find its, you know, find their way into, you know, so actually we'll slice the pie. But in general, there's a lack of giving any sort of shot to the little guy, right? That's really not a thing. We see this in very few markets where the small business gets you know, better regulations written up for, you know, more beneficial regulations written up for them in, rather than the big business, right? Most of the time it's for big business, if not completely mainly for big business, these regulations. Now, if we look at where I am right now currently filming OKC, right? OKC is a really interesting model. It's a medical market that has, that didn't, until recently, until a couple years ago, they, they didn't have any cap on it. They had no cap on de, uh, retail licenses, on growing licenses, all that. It was a low barrier to entry. It was like five thousand dollars to apply or something and get the light. It, it was very low barrier to entry, right? Now, just in the city of OKC, there's six hundred ninety thousand people, right? Now, out of that six hundred ninety thousand that are medical patients, we don't really know, but it's 
you know, it's definitely not the full amount. It's... So Sacramento though, 500,000 people, how many retail licenses do you think they have? 30, 30 retail licenses. They're supposed to be issuing out these 10 uh, retail, you know, social equity licenses, but they've, most of them haven't been released yet and it's been a couple years and they're still stuck in limbo. Now, the population of Sacramento is 500,000 people. Divide that by 30, you get 14,000. So for every store, there's 14,000 people, potential buyers, right? Now, in Oakland, Oklahoma City, right, I was, you know, touring different dispensaries and I was told that there was 800 plus there in that city, which blew my mind, right? 800 is, is, is so many, right? But as time goes on and competition is allowed to actually take place, you will see that number start to stabilize and go to an actual accurate, uh, you know, number of dispensaries, right? But if we divide, right, 690,000 by 800, we get 862, right? Meaning 862 people. So while in Sacramento, there's stores that have 14,000 per store, people, you know, 14,000 potential customers per store. Well, in uh, Oklahoma City, which is a medical market, right? They have 862 people. So there's 16 times, literally, 16x more people per store in Sacramento in comparison to stores in OKC, if that makes sense, right? So by limiting the amount of retail licenses, first of all, there's benefits for both sides when it comes to politicians and corrupt business people, right? Politicians can charge more, they can get more out of it, they're gonna have a lot more power, right? Because those, the less, the, 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 the less amount of licenses there are, the more valuable they're gonna become. And for the corrupt, you know, business person that, you know, acquires that, they're gonna be able to have less competitors, right? So you see obviously the benefits there and that's why this has happened. Now, while there are 30 retail dispensaries in uh, Sacramento, I would like to argue that there's actually 31 because John, well, he made the cut. He found the loophole. He found the, the one route that no one really, you know, saw. And also a big part of that was because he saw the future of what this all is. Folks, when it comes to retail and it comes to also a lot of other aspects of this industry, the real estate is the most important part. Real estate is everything. Real estate will, could make or break your business, especially with retail. Now, I also want to say too, these, you know, these corrupt, you know, business people, big business, big corporations, they can keep trying to hold back, you know, the, the masses from partaking in this business and trying to compete. But as time goes on, that pressure is going to go, you know, build up more and more over time, right? And they're going to, you know, you could try to put on, you know, slap on a few more regulations here, slap on a few more rules here to try to prevent the little guy, the small business from getting in and competing and maybe succeeding even, right? But as time goes on, eventually that pressure is going to build up to a point where it's just, someone's going to make a mistake and there's going to be a way for people to actually come and compete and that's going to burst and blow up, you know, in their face. That pressure is going to build up to the point where it blows up. You think that we're going to have only 30 places, 30 retail stores in the city of Sacramento to get this, a, a com, you know, the different compounds from this emerging industry of this plant, right? This, legal, this legalized plant now. You think it's only gonna be these 30 places forever? No. Eventually we're gonna get mass distribution from everywhere. Now the real question is, is it gonna be completely monopolized by a select few big corporations or is it going to be more fragmented is there going to be more people involved is there going to be actual competition because what i don't like to see is the government taking out big businesses for you know competition aka the little guy the small business anyways this is why i think this story is so important this is why i think what john did and his whole team did is really really smart and honestly a little courageous because really doing the story doesn't necessarily benefit them at all they want to tell their story, but also this is probably going to put some more heat on them. So I want to say big shouts out to them. I hope you guys see what I see in this story. And I really appreciate y'all. I'm in OKC, finishing up a bunch of really dope stuff here. I'm excited to share those stories with y'all. Anyways, this is LMC. See y'all later.